Are you looking for the best way to purify or filter water? In this video, I'm going to go through some of the best practices on how to treat water to make it safe for you and your family. Stay tuned. Hello friends and family, thanks for checking in. For anyone new here, my name is Russell Liston and I'm here to help you as you prepare every needful thing. Today's topic is water treatment. It's hard, if not impossible, to look at a water supply and say, oh yeah, that looks good, I drink that. I don't even try, I just treat it. The water treatment ideas that I wanna to discuss today are gonna to work with all sorts of water sources, whether it's a lake or a river, or it's that blue barrel in your basement, or maybe it's your city water that has something going on with it. These are systems that work for whatever the water situation is. The reason that you would be treating this water is because it would have the potential to have disease causing microorganisms that could make you sick, and we don't want that. Now back to water. The first step is to find the cleanest water source possible. Now we'll do what is called a pre-filter. This is the process that removes the large particles from the water, the stuff you can see with your eyes. This can be done by pouring the water through a layer of fabric, like a t-shirt or a towel or something like that, something that will stop the big particulates from going through. You can see it's already looking better. Another way to make this happen is to allow the sediment to settle to the bottom of the bucket and then either pour off the clean water or scoop out the clean water off the top. With our water now pre-filtered, let's look at some options of how to treat it to make it safe to drink. The first method that I want to mention is boiling. With all of the cool gadgets and filters out there, I always thought of boiling water as a bit of a joke. What I have come to find out is that that's what makes it so cool. No gadgets required. All that's needed is a heat source and a container that you can boil water in. It's just that simple. So whether it's a campfire or a cook stove with any metal pot, this system can work. When it comes to boiling water, there are two things to remember. Number one, pre-filter your water. Take out anything that's large enough that you can see with your eyes. And number two, bring it to a boil. If you live below 6,500 feet in elevation like most, most of us do in the United States, then one minute is all it's needed to treat that water. If you happen to be up in the mountains though, or at some higher elevation above 6,500 feet, you'll want to boil that water for three minutes. We now have hot water. What are we supposed to do with it? You could use it for cooking. If it's breakfast time, you could use it for oatmeal and a hot cup of cocoa. It could also be added to your freeze-dried or dehydrated meals. If you're thirsty, you'll probably need to wait a while to let it cool down. You could boil up some water at the end of the day, fill up all your empty water containers, and let them sit overnight so they can cool and be ready for you in the morning. Now you have a fresh supply of treated water and ready for the new day. The hot water is also great for washing your hands and cleaning your dishes. One of the biggest downfalls of boiling water is if you need water while you're on the go. It's not very convenient when you come to a water source to have to set up your stove or start a fire and boil up some water so you can treat that water while you're moving. It takes a lot of time and then you have to let it cool down before you drink it. So in that way, it's not the most convenient way to treat water. The next group I'd like to discuss are considered to be chemical treatments. This could be household bleach, iodine, or a number of drops or tablets that you can find on the shelf at the sporting goods store. This method is actually pretty effective depending upon the chemical or brand that you choose and the length of time that's needed to make it work properly. A few things to remember about the chemical treatments. The first thing is you want to make sure that you do pre-filter your water to get all of the floaties out. Next, depending upon the product that you choose, make sure you read the label and understand how to use that particular product. And then just follow the directions and do as it says, and you should be great. In comparison to the boiling method, this method is nice because you don't have to wait for the water to cool down, but there is a slight aftertaste that comes with these chemical treatments, I've found. Personally, I keep chemical treatments as kind of a backup option. My filter is probably my go-to, but in case something goes wrong with that, I like to have chemicals available so that I can use them if need be. One nice thing that I do like about the chemical drops or pills is that you can treat a large amount of water with either a few pills or the correct amount of drops into the container and just let it sit for the amount of time and then that water is treated and ready for use. The size of the chemical containers make them an excellent choice as a backup option for hiking or bug out bags and they're not very expensive so that's a great thing also. 
All right, let's talk about water filters now. If you're into gear, then you probably already own one, two, three, or more water filters, and you'll probably buy more because they just keep getting nicer and better and able to do more and more things, which makes it better for us as an end user. So I'm glad that people keep trying to improve their product and make them better for me and for you. Unlike boiling or chemical treatments that actually kill the viruses and bad stuff that's in the water, filtering actually tries to remove those things from the water. That's how the filtering process works, is that it allows the water to go through, but it stops the bad stuff from going through. In a similar way, some of the chemical treatments don't kill all the bad stuff, and some of the filters don't take all the bad stuff out. So it's good to understand what your filter is capable of doing. I have found filters to be the most user-friendly water treatment method. The water comes through the filter and it is ready to drink right then and there. There's no waiting around for it to cool down or for the chemical to work. You just put it through the filter and drink. That's awesome. Water filters used to be a pretty expensive piece of gear, but over the years they've come down in price and now you can get a pretty reputable water filter for around $20, which makes it really nice and easy for everybody to have one. Over the last few years, my favorite filters have been the Sawyer Squeeze and the Catadyne Be Free. I love how easy they are to use and to be able to filter water on the go. I like that the Sawyer Squeeze is compatible with different bottles or bags that you can purchase in aftermarket applications. One of the aftermarket products that I've liked is a bag from Knock called Vecto. It's a three liter bag or it comes in a two liter bag and it's just a great companion to go with the Sawyer Squeeze. It makes it easy to use as a gravity filter or as a squeeze filter. My latest filter is from Berkey and it's called the Big Berkey. My parents actually got it for me for Christmas this last year and I have loved it. The more I learn about it and test it and use it, the more I'm impressed with how amazing this filter is. I think everybody should have one in their house. The best part is, is that you don't have to wait for an emergency to start using it. Just fill it full of tap water and let it go to work. But if an emergency does happen, this is my go-to filter for any tap water that needs to be treated or if those blue barrels need to be used, I'm gonna run all that water through the Berkey. And don't be surprised if you see me carrying it down the street in an evacuation. It's just that awesome. The last thing I wanted to touch on is the idea of doing both filtering and chemical treatments on your water. As you learn more about your water filters and your chemical treatments, you'll understand that they do have limitations. You'll find that the chemicals are really good at killing certain things, but there's one thing they can't get rid of, and you'll find that the filter is really good at getting rid of that, but can't get rid of the viruses. So there's, the idea is that you can team them up and do both. This process isn't usually needed, but if you were a long way from home or in an emergency situation and medical help is probably not available, it might be wise to look at the situation and try to discover the best way to treat that water so that you don't have to worry about getting any medical help. It's actually really not that complicated. It's the two steps we've already talked about. You would run it through your water filter and then you would treat it with the chemicals and that's it. Now your water is ready to be used. This idea almost isn't even a discussion anymore. The filters just keep getting better that hopefully soon we won't even have to talk about double treating our water. Today's assignment is to evaluate your water treatment plan. Let's ask a few questions. How are you planning to treat water? If you have a system, have you ever tried it out? Have you tested it? If you have a filter and you've never taken it out of the box, I'd like to encourage you to take it out and give it a try and learn how that thing works. And if you've got some chemicals, do the same thing. Read the label, see how it works, and test it out. See what it tastes like so that you know what you're in for. Really what I'm after is I'd love for you to become familiar with your gear so that if you ever need to use these items, it's not your first time looking at them. You've already had a little bit of experience testing them out. My final thoughts on this subject are, it's nice to have options. It's nice to know that yes, you can store water, but if your storage runs dry, you have options to be able to treat water so that you can continue to have water to drink and to cook with and to clean things up. With the different options in water treatment that we talked about today, I wouldn't just choose one. I would choose all of them. And with the chemical treatments and the water filters, again, I wouldn't just choose one. 
I would choose multiple options so that I have many different ways in order to treat water. And I would put chemical treatments and filters into everybody's backpacks so that each member of my family has ways to treat water. And for my home use, this Berkey is an amazing filter. I'm sure there are other ones out there like it, but the Berkey I've been very impressed with. I hope that this has helped you in your understanding of water treatment and some different ways in which you can treat water if you need to. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, let me know. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd like to invite you to do so. And once again, I'd like to thank you for your time and may God bless you as you prepare every needful thing. Thank you.